ready. Well, this is lock 11. Hopefully the last lock that we're going to do today. Right. We have reached the top. And it goes up and up and up to there. This is all that's left of Alfcote Priory, a Benedictine priory. And we've got an announcement to make, haven't we? We have. Yeah. Are you going to tell them? Shall I tell them? Yeah, go on, you tell I'll them. I'll tell them. Good morning, everyone. Time to move on today. We've been here 10 days. I've got my new glasses with a strap this time so that they don't fly off. And we're now making our way north. And today's cruise, we've got the uh, Atherston locks to do. And then we're going to call in at Polesworth. And we're cruising uh, in the company of Tony and Jan. I'm making new memories again. So that's nice. We celebrated Jan's birthday last night. Uh, probably a little bit too well, <laughs> but there you go. So sit back and enjoy the cruise, folks. In this cruise, we leave Atherston and descend the 11 Atherston locks. We continue to Polesworth, where we moor up by Bridge 51 for the night. Next day, we then continued on to more just outside Alvecote Marina by the Samuel Barlow. Just coming into what's known as Minions Wharf. I haven't seen any Minions, but I guess they're around. And there's the boat, Tony and Jan are topping up with water. We did that yesterday. So we're gonna just top up a little bit further down the line. But uh, it's lovely here, it's really nice. Jen's getting into the swing of it, literally. <laughs> Whoa. Clearly can't film and video <laughs> and steer at the same time. Stay one handed, dug in one hand. Don't want to wet <laughs> Lovely birthday girl up front getting ready to do the paddle for us. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready, contenders? <laughs> Go for it, Joe. When we're working the locks, I try to help Chris as much as I can. Usually, once the boat's brought into the lock, especially if we're going down the lock, I will often jump off the boat and close the offside paddle, the paddle furthest away from the gate beam. While I'm doing that, of course, Chris will shut the uh, lock gate behind Amy Jo, and I then walk forward and open the paddle up on the opposite side to where Chris is. I then go back onto Amy Jo and get ready as the boat's descending, and Chris then opens the second paddle to make the lock drop quicker. Is Tony leaving the lock? <laughs> you heard his name. And there is Steve approaching the lock. Yeah, you know, Steve's up there. I'm, with the help of Jan, <laughs> open the paddles to fill the lock. And down here, 
Smudge gives me back. Ugh. I might have to do a 360 in a minute. Smudge has wrapped himself around my legs. We have Tony down there. And in the distance is Jan doing the next look. That gap here is a bit too wide for Smudge to jump over. So he is there. He doesn't like being on his own, so quite often barks at me. Those of you that have followed our vlogs for some time will remember when we were going down, oh sorry, up the Foxton Locks, they had side pounds with like lakes to conserve water. Well, this is a miniature version of one of those lakes. At the moment, it's very empty. I don't even think it's in use. But this is used to try and conserve some of the water for the lock. Looks a bit horrible at the moment, but in its day, it would have done the same job as the uh, pounds on the Foxton locks. Well, this is lock 11. Hopefully the last lock that we're gonna to do today but it really doesn't seem as if we've done 11 locks. It's just been really quite smooth. And obviously because of the two of us traveling, I've had to refill each lock, but we got into a routine and as Jan left the lock, she reset one paddle. And uh, so that it starts to fill before I get there. And uh, Smudge is tied on there. Otherwise, he'd be off with Jan and Tony, I think. Well, we made it down the 11 Atherston Locks, or Atherston Locks. And uh, we're now going to start looking for a mooring somewhere near Polesworth, if we can. But the sun's coming out, the weather's turning nice. It's still very chilly, but uh, quite a pleasant cruise now. We're approaching Grendon Wharf and its linear moorings located here on the Coventry Canal close to Atherston. The site is approximately 430 metres long and provides spaces for up to 20 boats moored on the offside bank. The site is located between Bridge 48 Bradley Green and Atherston Bottom Lock. Located a mile from the A5, access to the site is from Spon Lane. The village of Polesworth is about 30 minutes cruise north of here and offers a small shop and two public houses and a wider range of shops can be found at Atherston.
Good morning. Well, have a nice quiet night on our moorings last night. But today is what we call a services day. Uh, we're in desperate need of a pump out and we could do with some diesel. And um, we've got Alvcott Marina just uh, an hour up the cut. So that's where we're gonna be heading for this morning. And then with the weather forecast, forecasting snow and ice for next week, we're gonna find ourselves a nice spot to moor up and uh, ride out the cold weather. So enjoy the cruise this morning, folks. Having pumped out and dieseled up and got a new bottle of gas, we had to find a mooring and we'd already passed two very nice mooring spots. So now we reversed Amy Jo all the way back and so did Tony on the boat and we moored right opposite the Samuel Barlow. We'd have been forecasting snow and uh, sure enough we've got it although it's not heavy yet but it's thickening up faster well, hi <laughs> we've, we've just come back from walking to tesco yeah. direct here at alvcott and we've just met this gentleman martin who's one of our subscribers and he's come all the way yeah. over from uh Amington. Amington Amington to come yeah. and visit us so Nice to meet you, Martin. Yeah, Say hi to everyone. It's a pleasure, a pleasure, a pleasure. <laughs> During our time here opposite the Alfcott Marina, we noticed that there were several old working boats moored up around the marina grounds. And it turns out that the, mar the marina owner is a fan of old historical working boats and owns several himself. This particular butty, Norfolk, was part of the Samuel Barlow Coal Carrying Company Limited, which was one of the last companies to trade regularly on the Grand Union and Oxford canals. Barlow was an enterprising man and in September 1879, he moved to Glascott, which adjoins Tamworth in an area where coal mining industry was developing strongly, as he saw opportunities to expand his business. It proved to be a wise move. Today, all that are left of the Alvcote Coal Colliery is Alvcote Marina and the nearby lakes. The colliery, also known as Tamworth Colliery, was sunk in 1875 by Charles Brownslow Marshall. 
In 1951, the Colliery and Pooley Hall Colliery merged with Emmingdon Colliery to form the Norfolk Warwick Colliery. Fourteen years later, North Warwick Colliery closed and the Alvecott mine shafts were officially recorded as abandoned in 1965. Damage due to mining subsidence occurred in the landscape to the north of Alvecott Colliery due to the systematic mining of several coal seams in the same area and the subsidence caused large lakes where it had previously been agricultural land. This is all that's left of Alvecote Priory, a Benedictine Priory. Now very little remains of the Priory and most of the walls have eroded, but a fairly high wall remains on one side. The main entrance arch is the most impressive feature, still standing at around 20 feet or 6.1 metres high. It was founded in 1159 by William Burdett as a dependency of the Great Malvern Priory. It's said that after returning from a crusade, Burdett accused his wife of being unfaithful and he stabbed her and as a penance founded the monastery. out of breath not as fit as I thought I was because we've just walked up this oh. this she dragged me up I Did had I? no choice <laughs> <laughs> but look who I had and I put him on his lead so he pulled me up <laughs> zoomies right we have reached the top and it goes up and up Ooh. and up to there and then there is Jan standing at the bottom and in the background you'll see a white dot every so often that's smudge here he comes he's loving it today it. I'm videoing this as I don't even think Steve would attempt to get up the hill <laughs> sorry Steve I struggled, I'm not going to lie. Smudge didn't know, I think he's the only one out of the three of us that didn't. But it's a beautiful view all the way around. Fantastic. <laughs> That's where she was saying about to go to the castle grounds was up there, wasn't it? Castle grounds up there. Yeah, but, but the other lady said to come through here, the anchor side. It's all pedestrianised. And there's another bit down there. And this is Tamworth. So we've just come out of the precinct. <laughs> I believe that's the river anchor sorry say that again no please. i'm not putting a w in front of it 
<laughs> Lovely gardens, beautiful flowers, just starting to come out. And the castle up there in the background. You can't see it very clearly because there's trees in the way. That's a better view of the castle. Don't quite know what that is on the, the fence. We're going to go and investigate. I think I'm going down the grass and Jan there is going down somewhere else. <laughs> Does it say? castle and all the flowers past the bandstand and there's a school um, party behind us and that was the inside shopping centre I don't know if you can see the church is in the background up there there it is then this is the side of the church it's absolutely massive. Well, Jan and I have walked into St Edith's Church this morning on our trip. Beautiful stained glass window. And down to the altar. They hold coffees here on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And as today's Monday, I think we've missed out on that. <laughs> A wedding? Yeah. This one's got a different type of rood screen. It's sort of like all metal. Very open so you can see through it, which is quite nice. And the choir stalls behind. And the pulpit. Because we're into Lent, it's the purple, well not Lent, is it? The purple covers. Getting ready for Easter. You've got the inside first and then I'll do the outside now. But it's a long way up. <laughs> I should have stepped backwards a bit, I suppose. But hey ho. And this is the church from the other side. We're getting a bit wet now. So we are walking back towards the bus stop, wherever it may be. You're doing it. The reason we're popping up is really just to thank all our new subscribers uh, on behalf of Chris, myself and Smudge. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate it. And we've got an announcement to make, haven't we? We have. Yeah. You're going to tell them? Shall I tell them? Yeah, go on, you tell I'll them. I'll tell them then. <laughs> this year we are going to Crick. Uh, we're not taking the boat as that's up just your oh, area. Excuse Smudge, photo bombing. But... We are just going for the Saturday, staying overnight, and all day Sunday. That's it. So if you are about and you see us, please come and say hello, because obviously we don't recognise everybody. Well, no, we'd love um, to meet you if you haven't met us yeah. before. And uh, it'd be nice to see some of the other uh, subscribers yes. who go regularly. So we're really yes. looking forward to that. And, of course, meeting the other vloggers. Yeah, the, uh, I think Crick Show is fast becoming the vlogging convention <laughs> yeah. now. Most of the well-known vloggers <laughs> and some of the new ones will be attending as well. So it'll be lovely to meet up yeah. with them as well. So hope you enjoyed the vlog, folks. It's um, We'll cut it short because we don't want to yeah. be waffling on. Uh, but again, thanks for watching. Stay safe. If you like the vlogs, of course, do give us a thumbs up. And uh, for those of you watching who haven't yet, you can subscribe to the channel and hitting the bell icon, of course, we'll give you notifications when we launch our new <laughs> vlogs, which are usually on a Sunday. So you, yeah, there's no excuse. Yeah. <laughs> so take care, folks. Look after yourselves. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. On the Bye. Bye.